Hey everyone, Ben here. I hope you enjoy today's video. If you do enjoy today's video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because we're trying to grow on the platform and turn on the notification bell to be notified of all uploads and live streams. And if you did like today's video, then don't forget to hit a like down below because it helps other people to find our videos. And don't forget to comment down below on any suggestions for content that you have or comment about today's content. Let me know what you thought. Let's get into the video. Alright, so it's been a while since I've done a deck profile on Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel because I took a long break from the game uh, after Konami completely screwed over Destiny Heroes and made them no longer viable because of people abusing Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer. Uh, I got a little bit mad and took some time away because I couldn't deal with Konami's crap any longer. But anyway, we're back because I got inspiration to build a Malefic deck and... I want to share it with you guys. Now, remember, like I've said before, I don't like it when people just carbon copy decks off YouTube. Uh, I'm only showing the deck as an example of what kind of stuff you can do with an archetype. Of course, I can't stop people from carbon copying it, but that's besides the point. So, anyway, getting into the deck profile, the new Malefica support that came out in the past couple of years makes this deck a really big special summoning machine. But let's jump in. So we're running three copies of Malefic Paradox gear. So if there is a face-up field spell, you're able to tribute this card to special summon a Malefic Parallel gear and add a Malefic monster from your deck to your hand, allowing you to instantly go in for a Synchro play. Not only that, but if this card is in the graveyard, you can tribute this as a requirement for one of your Malefic monster summons. So let's say you've got a Malefic Cyber End Dragon in your hand, but no Cyber End Dragons in the extra deck, you could uh, banish this from the graveyard to count as that tribute, which is really good. Three copies of Malefic Parallel Gear. So when they're using this card as Synchro Material, the other Synchro Material must be one Malefic Monster in your hand, which is fantastic, because normally with Synchros, you have to get all the monsters on the field. But with Malefic Parallel Gear, the Malefic Monster can be in your hand, which is amazing. We're running two copies of Malefic Blue Eyes White Dragon. We're only really running this for Synchro Material because we're not running any normal Blue Eyes in this deck. However, you can still normal summon this by banishing this from your graveyard. But this is mainly to go into a level 10 Synchro play. Three copies of Malefic Stardust Dragon. So we can summon this normally, but this is mostly in the deck for, again, level 10 Synchro plays. We're running three copies of Danger Bigfoot. Danger Bigfoot works really well in this deck because it's a level 8 Dark Monster. Um, so we can, again, use it for big synchro plays when it comes to summoning malefic synchros. But we can also use it pretty well for um, XYZ plays as well. There's a few XYZs in this deck. And being able to summon this card, of course, everyone knows what this card does by now. But you can reveal it in your hand. Your opponent randomly chooses one card from your entire hand, then discards the chosen card. If the discarded card was not Danger Bigfoot, you can special summon it instantly to the field. And if it was the target sent to the graveyard, you can use it to pop a card on the field that's face up. We're running three copies of Malefic Cyber End Dragon. We do use this for one Synchro, but this is mostly a big beat stick. You can just instantly summon once you've got Malefic World out. 4,000 points, you can't grumble at that. Three uh, copies of Malefic Paradigm Dragon, which again, another massive beat stick. But what you can do is once per turn with this card, you can get one of your banished Synchro monsters, send it to the extra deck, and then you can have the option to summon it straight to the field if you want which is great for big boy plays. Of course, on the turn that you do do that, you can only attack with Malefic Monsters, so bear that in mind. We're running three copies of Trade-In. This is for stuff like Malefic Stardust and Blue-Eyes White Dragon. You can trade those in to get two cards. It's great draw power for the deck. Again, Allure of Darkness, draw two cards, banish a Dark Monster from your hand. The entirety of the deck is Dark Monsters, so you're not going to have any problem meeting the requirements for uh, Allure of Darkness. Three copies of Mef Malefic Selector. This is actually a really good card. You can banish two Malefic cards from your graveyard to add two Malefic cards from your deck to your hand, except Malefic Selector, with different names to each other and from the banished cards. So say, for example, if I used um, Malefic Selector to banish Cyber End Dragon and Blue Eyes, I couldn't then get those from the deck with the, with the card because it has to be different cards than the two you banished, basically. Three copies of Malefic World. Of course, this is necessary for the deck. Malefic World being the field spell for the Malefic Archetype. Uh, so during your draw phase, instead of conducting your normal draw, you can reveal three Malefic cards from your deck. Then your random opponent randomly adds one of them to your hand and shuffle the rest back into the deck. So this, the field spell effect itself, basically acts kind of like a bingo machine go for Blue Eyes. It's the same effect. 
We're running three copies of Malefic Territory. So this is necessary. So when this card is activated, you can activate one Malefic World from your deck. While that card is in your field zone, neither player can target a card in the field zone with card effects. The Malefic Monster effect, there can only be one face at Malefic Monster on the field, becomes there can only be one face at Malefic Monster on the field with the same name, and during the battle phase, negate the effects of Malefic Monsters on the field. This card is essential, because not only can you have multiple Malefic Monsters on the field at one time with this thing, but it also cancels out the negative effect of only one Malefic Monster can attack. Meaning, any monsters you have out can attack whilst you've got this card in play. It is essential. Not to mention, it gives you single target protection against Malefic World. So if someone tries to, I don't know, Twin Twister you or Mystical Space Typhoon you, they'll have to get rid of Territory first. Although, cards like Harpy's Feather Duster will wipe both. So be careful of that. We're running two copies of Hand Destruction. So... I was toying between a few of the draw power cards, and Hand Destruction for me worked the best, mainly because of Malefic Selector. So, of course, Malefic Selector requires you to banish two Malefic cards from your graveyard, and this drops two cards. So if you need more draw power and you have both in your hand, not only can you send two Malefic cards to the graveyard to draw two, but then you can also activate Malefic Selector in order to get another two cards straight from the deck of your choosing. So you go, basically, you go plus two. It's actually really good. Uh, part of Acquisitiveness, this is another great card for the deck. Target three banished monsters, shuffle all three into the deck, and then draw one card. So we are going to be banishing quite a bit with this deck. So this card just allows you to uh, get some of those monsters back into the deck to, to use for future plays. And then one copy of Malefic Divide, which is target one Malefic monster in the graveyard, special summon it, ignoring its summoning conditions, but its effects are negated and also banish it during the end phase. So you can use this to, let's say, bring back Malefic Stardust Dragon and go into a, um, like a rank AXE play with Danger Bigfoot or something. It's not a bad card to have. I did toy with changing this for a card like Malefic Claw Stream, but this card just has a bit more utility to it. So as you can tell, we're not running any traps in this deck, mainly because traps don't really work so well for this deck. Like, I, I was toying with other, you know, major trap cards like skill drain or quaking mirror force or stuff like that but in turn it's not really that necessary because our whole goal with this deck is to summon big beefy monsters to plow over everything we're not really interested in going on the defensive and it works really well like i've gone all the way back from bronze all the way up to platinum rank with just this deck it's honestly a good deck is it undefeatable no <laughs> i've been defeated by really stupid decks but it works like 90% of the time. So onto the extra deck. So we're running two copies of Cyber End Dragon. This is just so we can summon up Malefic Cyber End Dragon. Two copies of Stardust Dragon. This is mainly just to summon Malefic Stardust Dragon, but you can also bring it back with Malefic Paradigm Dragon's effect. So you can have a Stardust Dragon on the field for no cost, pretty good. Two copies of Malefic Paradox Dragon. So, when this card is Synchro Summoned, you can select one Synchro Monster in either player's graveyard and special summon it. There can only be one face of Malefic Paradox Dragon on the field. If Malefic World is not the field, destroy this card. It's a big 4,000 point beat stick that allows you to summon a free Synchro from the graveyard. Pretty good. Uh, I always butcher this name. Dragocoitus Corrupted Nether Soul Dragon. So, again, another 4,000 point level 10 Synchro beat stick, but this has a really good effect. So, it cannot be destroyed by battle. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sent it to the graveyard, you can activate this effect. This card can make a second attack on an opponent's monster in a row. During a standby phase, you can target one face up monster your opponent controls. Its attack becomes half its current attack, and if it does, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the last attack. So not only does this card have a 4,000 point beat stick ability, but it also has burn damage, which is also super useful for this deck. Another really good card that's coming clutch for me is Time Lord Progenitor Vorp Gate. So this card cannot be destroyed by battle by card effects. If you attack into something or they attack into you, you can then banish your opponent's entire monster field until the end of the turn and then they come back. It's really useful during your turn. You can attack into them with this first, wipe their monster base and then just go for game. It's honestly a really good go for game ability. Uh, Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign. So 
this is actually a really useful card in this deck. So a 3000 point level 10 synchro beat stick. For each banished card, this card gains 100 attack and defense and monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack and defense. So because we banish a lot, it's actually a really nice card to go into because it can get a lot of attack really quickly. Uh, and then... Blah, 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 blah. If this card would be destroyed by card effect, you can banish one card from your graveyard instead. If a card is banished, except during the damage step, you can banish one card from each from both your opponent's field and graveyard so now you can start banishing their graveyard which is the most important part of Yu-Gi-Oh nowadays the graveyard you can start banishing from it which is fantastic we're running geomath mech final sigma this is the only level 12 synchro monster we're running but it's worth it so it's a 3000 point beat stick and it's if it's in the extra monster zone it's unaffected by card effects except math mech cards meaning this thing cannot be targeted whatever by any card effects it can only be destroyed by battle and sure whilst it's 3000 points a lot of monsters can get over that now for a few turns this can easily throw off your opponent i've had this happen so many times with this deck so far it's thrown my opponent so far off that they just don't know what to do now we're out of the synchros we're going into the xe's so we're running one number 100 numeron dragon uh i'm gonna throw this in with the other two number 38 hope harbringer and number 97 draglubion so the way this works is you're gonna use two of your level rates to go into Dragloobi draglubion and then you're gonna use its effect to either summon hope harbringer or numeron dragon so hope harbringer what's per term when a spell or card effect is activated you can negate the effect if you do attach that card to this card as material but I personally use it for Numeron Dragon mostly. So Numeron Dragon, you can get rid of one of its materials and it gains the attack points based upon times 1000, times 1000 um, compared to the number of ranks on any XEs on the board. So since you'll have Draglubion out and Numeron Dragon, it goes to 9000 attack in that turn. And it's I've gone for games so many times with just that combo because people aren't prepared for it. It's a really good combo to run. Uh, Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon. So this, whilst it has a pretty good effect, it's a 3,000 beat stick with uh, you can detach one material from this card, inflict 2,000 damage to your opponent. I personally use it to synchro, uh, sorry, synchro XE on itself to go into Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon. This one, once per turn, you can XE special summon. Uh, super Dreadnought, blah, blah blah blah. Yep. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card. It gains 2,000 attack and defense. Also, for the rest of this turn, you can only declare an attack with this card. During each battle phase, this card can make attacks on monsters up to the number of materials it has plus one. So since it would have uh, three materials on it by default, by default, it can attack four times without giving it the power boost. If you drop an XE to give it 2,000 extra points, it can attack still three times on monsters allowing you to go for game in big plays like that. But that's the deck itself. Let's jump into the deck profile. All right, so these are some of the combo plays you can make with this deck. So this is actually a really good starting hand, starting with trade-in, blue eyes, Malefic World, and Malefic Paradox gear. So this person was running some weird Dark Magician deck that runs like multiple field spells. It was kind of weird, not gonna lie. Definitely not the, the meta way to run that deck. Kind of like it though. I dig it when people take a deck and sort of anti-meta it. <laughs> I hate meta, so it's, you know. Hence why I run stuff like Malefics and Destiny Heroes and, well, I did run Destiny Heroes till Konami killed the archetype. But stuff like Toons and Cyberdarks, because I love the anti-meta stuff. Anyway, so they're just setting up their board, so we'll let them get away with whatever they're doing. Okay. So starting off, we drew Hand Destruction, which is super useful, actually. So we'll activate Trade in to drop Blue Eyes White Dragon in order to draw two, summon that, activate Malefic World, uh, activate its effect to summon up a, a Malefic Parallel Gear and add a Cyber End Dragon, then use those two to synchro into the Geo Math Mech, which, like I said, is enough to throw your opponent off. It can throw them off heavily because they can't target it with anything. So hand destruction. So they try and use infinite impertinence on it, but can't because it's in the extra monster zone, meaning it cannot be targeted by anything. <laughs> so I'd use hand destruction to drop those to add those to my hand. They do that weirdly. I don't know why, but 
Activate Allure of Darkness, draw two, drop Malefic pa um, para uh, Paradox gear. Activate Malefic Territory to give that protection to my thingy. Summon Paradigm Dragon, because you can. Attack straight, immediate 4,000 points of damage. Like, this deck is honestly just big, beefy beat sticks that allow you to just go for game. It's insane. But they activate Magician Salvation, set Eternal Soul. So, they go for Secrets of Dark Magic. Which, at this point, I thought they were going to go for, um... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Quintet Magician. Because they had, like, five different, uh, like, monsters, I believe. So they could have gone for that, but didn't. They end up going for the Dark Magicians. I have no idea why, but... Not that the Dark Magicians is a back card, it's not, but in this situation, it doesn't help them. Although, they do activate Secret Village of the Spellcasters, which is a bit weird. <laughs> Considering I've already got stuff on the board, it really didn't matter to me. So activate Malefic World, that allows me to get stuff from the deck, like I said before. So, of course, they get to draw a card because they activate the spell effect. Summon up Parallel Gear, they activate Eternal Soul. Special Summon the Dark Magician. Now, I thought with this they were going to get rid of my Paradigm Dragon. They didn't. They got rid of my Parallel Gear. <laughs> so, I just summoned up Stardust, Malefic Stardust Dragon because why not? So, then summon Stardust Dragon with this guy's effect. And, of course, I can only attack with the Malefic Monsters this turn. So, of course, that effect kicks in. They get to summon a Dark Magician and a Dark Magician Girl. Which is fine with me, too, because I just attack over the Dark Magician Girl. There's no point attacking over these yet because of Eternal Soul. He'll just bring it back in my turn and banish something else. So, I figured I could just ruin him in one turn. So, of course, they go in for a Link play into whatever that is. I don't even know that card, but it's kind of cool. But then they summon up my Malefic Parallel Gear again. No idea why. <laughs> I don't know what they were attempting to go for, but... So there's my Parallel Gear. Using it for a Link play to go into a level 3 Link. No, a level 2 Link, sorry. That's it. It's a Predipan Verte. Which, of course, allows them to activate the Fusion card. So they activate Super Poly. Super Poly into Mud Dragon of the Swamp. Again, I have no idea why. I guess to just get my 4,000 beat stick off the board, but... This deck was weird, man. Like, it was so strange. It was almost like this deck was having an identity crisis. I have no idea what it was trying to do. I was just sat there last night. Bearing in mind, this was at like 4 in the morning. Because I was just chilling before I went to bed. Like, and I was seeing all of these really, really, really random plays. I couldn't understand what was going on. And then they surrender the door. <laughs> But that's it for the Malefic Dick profile. If you enjoyed um, the profile, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to join me on my socials. I've also started live stream streaming more on YouTube now instead of Twitch uh, for multiple reasons. But I'm mainly streaming on YouTube now. So don't forget to turn on the notification bell to be notified of when I go live. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hey everyone, thank you for watching today's video. Above is a preview of the previous upload, and if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe, please, because we're trying to grow on the platform. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell to be notified of all uploads and live streams. And if you liked the video, why not leave it a like? It really does help other people to find my videos, and don't forget to comment down below on any content you want to see, or what you thought about this video specifically. Let me know, and I will see you guys in the next one.